Hi there. Now we are going to overview machine learning monitoring architectures. There are quite a lot of options you might use to build your monitoring system. I believe it's essential to start monitoring your machine learning models as soon as you deploy them to production. Even if you lack some resources to build a solid monitoring system, you can still start from something. There are quite a lot of options for monitoring backend and for monitoring frontend as well, and today we are going to have a short overview of them. Let's start our discussion from the backend. Basically, here you have two main options, either create the batch monitoring jobs and have a batch monitoring, or create the full online machine learning monitoring service. Both have it pros and cons. Let's discuss it in a little bit more details. When it comes to batch machine learning monitoring system, it might sound that it works well with the batchly deployed models, but doesn't really suit for machine learning models deployed in online. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. So what you need to do to build batch machine learning monitoring backend? Basically here you need to create a pipeline where you have a step for metric calculations and you need to schedule this job. Right? So the idea is that you have some cadence, for example, run this monitoring job every 10 seconds or every minute or maybe hourly, or you can run this monitoring job on a trigger. For example, as soon as new batch of data arrived or as soon as you got new batch of labeled data. It works very well with partially deployed model because basically if your production model is implemented as the, for example, airflow, uh, batch deck, then you can just add one more step or a couple more steps, uh, which are tasks in the deck, and those tasks should be dedicated for monitoring metrics calculation. That's quite straightforward. There are quite a lot of metrics which are supposed to be calculated in a batch way. For example, data drift calculation, which assumes the comparison between the distribution of the same features from reference and current dataset. In this case, even if you have your machine learning model deployed as an online service, you still want to have your monitoring, at least for those specific metric, drift, implemented as the batch. And actually, it more or less works fine for all the other metrics. Even if you have your machine learning model deployed as an online service, you can still implement monitoring in a batch way. In this case, you need to create a pipeline with metrics calculation and to read the data, for example, from logs or a database where you store all the data your service received and all the outputs and maybe labels. So in this case, you just decide on a cadence and run your monitoring pipeline. The alternative to this approach is new real-time or real-time or streaming machine learning monitoring. In this case, you basically change the way how you integrate the monitoring with your machine learning service. So the idea is to send your data directly from the machine learning service to the monitoring system, calculate metrics on the fly, and then store it somewhere, for example, in time series based database, and then show them in your online dashboard. So this works pretty well, especially if you have the set of metrics which you can calculate in real time or near real time, again, milliseconds, maybe seconds, and it works very well with the online dashboarding interface. It makes a lot of sense if you have online machine learning model and want to build real time or near real time monitoring. We are going to discuss batch and near real time monitoring approach in a minute, but before I want to add a small note. Even if you do not have enough resources to build either batch or new real-time monitoring, you still can do something. At least you can start from ad hoc reporting. So you can just write a Python script, which helps you to perform some analytics, for example, metrics calculations or test calculation, or maybe even add some visualization and run it on your own pace. For example, after each batch or maybe daily or maybe weekly, and at least it will help you to build some observability of your machine learning system and log some historical information on the performance and data quality. It is still much better than do nothing, so do not reject ad hoc reporting at the very beginning. This is a nice start. 
So now let's move on to batch machine learning uh, monitoring service in a little more details. So the idea here is that you can create different pipelines which helps you to calculate metrics for different types of analysis. For example, you can create a dedicated pipeline for data validation and run it every time you have a new batch of data or on a cadence. Then, after you calculated all these metrics, you need to log it to the metrics and test results database or object store, and then you can connect your dashboarding system to this data store storage and implement any dashboards you like. Together with data validation pipelines, you can create some more, for example, pipelines related to the models output checks or maybe models quality metrics and also log all this data to your metrics and test results storage. You can do it in an asynchronous way. So, I mean, you might log the data related to different pipelines asynchronically and then implement and add more panels to your dashboard. The alternative scenario is to have the online machine learning monitoring system. In this case, what you want to do is to send your data to the monitoring system directly. For example, as soon as you received some requests to your machine learning model service and the model generated some output, you could send this data you can do it by request or you can accumulate several requests and send small batches or mini batches to the machine learning monitoring service. Here you need to have the implementation of metrics calculations and then you need to still store this data somewhere. In this case, you would rather want to use some time series database, for example, like Prometheus or maybe Glickhouse or any other database you use uh, for monitoring and then connect your dashboarding system to this monitoring. So the, this part of monitoring system stays more or less the same. And here again, in your dashboarding system, you need to add, you need to create a dashboard. So you need to add all the panels you like, depending on what you just log to your database and you will be able to observe all the metrics in your dashboard. When it comes to front-end, you still have some options because in both examples uh, with batch and our new real-time backend, I expected that you will need to have some dashboarding system, but this is actually also quite optional. You might even have no UI at all. So your monitoring system might just limit itself by logging data somewhere to database and send you some alert. You might have one of reports instead of online dashboards. And of course you might have live dashboard. So let's explore all these options. If you don't really need a user interface or you do not have resources to build one, you might start from just logging your metrics to some database. It will already be very useful because you still can create some alerts on top of those logged data and you will start to log historical data so that later you might be able to visualize it, analyze it, use it for retraining and many types of uh, analysis, right? So that's already very, very useful. The next step is to build some one-off reports. It can be some customly written systems, for example, with help of some R or Python libraries, or maybe you can use some BI visualization tools for this. In this case, you just create those reports one by one in case you need it. There are no live dashboards, but still you are able to visualize thing things when you feel like you need it. If you do have some BI systems, which you're already using your company, for example, for some product or business analytics, you can reuse it for your machine learning models. In this case, just make sure that you connected the data source with the metrics to this BI system, and you can add some more plots and panels to the uh, dashboards as well. And of course, you can have the most complex system where you create the dedicated machine learning monitoring dashboard with a lot of data quality and data performance metrics, which can give you the online updated metrics. Right. So uh, I would say that each option for backend and frontend have its pros and cons. It's always makes sense to be pragmatic and decide what suits for you.
You can always start from something simpler and more lightweight like one-off reports or no UI at all and batch jobs and then iterate on the complexity of your machine learning monitoring system. I would say that it makes a lot of sense to consider reusing existing tools, uh, for example BI tools, uh, and reuse it for your machine learning model. We will have a deep dive into these topics in modules 5 and 6 with some code examples and deployment blueprints.